Hello everybody, Bradley here and welcome into the world of Anno 1800 where today I will be your guide into getting started in this game. I have seen a lot of people pick up Anno 1800 for the first time recently because of the Steam Winter Sale and a lot of those people are genuinely confused. They are perplexed, they are getting into this game and having no idea what is going on. And if that is you, I'm going to make a really long tutorial video right now that will cover all the basic mechanics in Anno 1800 so that when you start your first playthrough or your second or your third, uh, you have a way to get into the game and understand what is happening so that at least you're not just thrown off guard from the very beginning. I want to be clear about two things right up front. First, if you are an advanced or experienced Anno 1800 player, this video is not for you. You will probably not learn very much. I'm just trying to cover all of the basic mechanics to a level in which people can understand how it works if they have never played this game before or are relatively new to this game. If you are new to this game, just know that I will not be able to cover every single thing. This video will be 900 hours long. I'm going to cover all the basic mechanics to the best of my ability, so hopefully you understand what is fundamentally happening in this video game. However, if this tutorial does well and people seem to be keen on more, I would love to make more complicated tutorials as you get going. But today we're going to start with all of the basic stuff. And believe me, there's a lot of basic stuff. I'm, I'm starting from the top here, but I would not be surprised if this video is like an hour long. Almost all of this video is going to happen in game, but before we get there, I just want to talk to you a little bit about setting up your game really quick. If you click new game, you're going to have a couple of options. One is going to be the campaign. I recommend this. It's a little tutorial in and of itself. And the great thing about the campaign, if I remember correctly, once it's done, it just becomes a sandbox game. So you can start in the campaign, get a grasp on what is happening, and then just continue that game from there. If you would like to start your own game, you are going to need to click sandbox. If you do click sandbox, just make sure you are set up on the easier settings so you have some wiggle room to work with. When you get through all of the character customization options, just make sure you are set up here on normal. That should be fine. You want a high amount of starting cash, high influence, large world and islands. This is basically giving you a lot of grace and a lot of leeway uh, to kind of learn the game and make some mistakes. If you click advanced or expert, you're probably going to have a pretty bad time if you don't know what is going on. So just make sure you select normal here or customize your own settings to make them even easier. I would recommend that as well. For the purposes of this tutorial, I have loaded up our YouTube save, which we are playing over on VB Plays. If you want to check out that uh, Let's Play channel that is in the description, we are playing Anno 1800 over there. And sometimes watching me play and might help you learn. Um, just so you know, this game is modded. I will not be talking about any of the mod stuff. Everything that I go over in this tutorial will be applicable to a non-modded game with no DLC. Um, just know that you might see a few things that will not be in your game, such as this giant fishery, this large fishery. This does not exist in regular Anno. So if you're not seeing that, that's fine. I will only be talking about things that exist in your version of the game. And the first thing that we are going to talk about are your islands. In Anno 1800, by the end of the game, you will be settling multiple islands. You can have big islands here like Crown Falls. This is in the Cape Trelawney uh dlc here you can have smaller islands like this one if we go to where we started our game we have our main city here of bracton which is a fairly reasonable size um, but you can also settle small islands like this and um, so obviously the size of your island matters a lot as you can see we're going to need a lot of room to build things we need to build farms we need to build houses we need to build kind of harbor area stuff we need to build some production buildings all of that needs to fit somewhere the bigger your islands are the better so i recommend going for large islands early on in your playthrough if you can settle them. Now that we've learned that size does matter in Anno and you should have large islands, let's talk about fertilities. Each island is only going to be able to grow a certain amount of things. The easier your game mode settings are, the more of these things each island will be able to grow. If we take a look at Crown Falls here on the bottom left, you will see that we can grow potatoes, we can grow uh, grain, we can grow hops, and we can grow grapes. So if I go into my production down here, and I know that I need schnapps right here, which is a production chain in everyone's game of Anno. It needs potatoes and it turns it into schnapps. I know that I can build that on this island because this has potato fertility. If I go to another production chain, say this canned food here, and I need tomatoes here for this, or this red pepper here for this cannery, this red pepper you can see at the bottom is missing fertility. So I cannot build it on this island. While there are other ways of gaining red peppers, which we can talk about in a more complex tutorial, for the purposes of this one, let's say I did want these red peppers to build this cannery here, I would have to go to an island that had a red pepper fertility. Here's Crown Falls. As you can see, if I go to the map here and I click on this island just below it, it has red pepper fertility. So if I tried to build red peppers here, 
that would be perfect. However, if I tried to build grain here, I wouldn't be able to do that because this does not have grain fertility. So I hope the fertilities make sense. If you are trying to build something and you're not understanding why you cannot build it on this island or why it's not working, it is likely because you are trying to build something where the island does not have the right fertility. The next thing on your islands you should know about are the natural resources. Just under the fertilities here, it has all the resources. You won't know what all of these mean quite yet, but just if you are looking for them, here's where they are. If you ever find yourself needing clay, this island has four clay pits here. You can just click on this button and it'll show you where they are. Uh, we have nine iron deposits like that. We have three zinc deposits. We got three limestone deposits. So those are all the resources on this island. If we go to our main island of Bracton, it's not quite as big. Crown Falls is pretty luxurious. You can see here we only have one limestone deposit. It's over here. We have four clay pits though, and those are kind of being worked over there. Um, so just if at any point, what you need is kind of resources. If you go to the workers here and you're trying to build bricks and you say you need clay, if your island does not have any clay deposits, you will need to get that clay from another island. So that's where all of that information is here. And that just scales up uh, as you need more things. So bricks here need clay, that's right there. If you come up to iron, you're gonna need coal and iron. Or if you come up to uh, steelworks, you're gonna need coal and iron. Um, you can see here that this island doesn't have any coal mines. So I'm gonna have to find a different way to get that coal, whether it's from a charcoal kiln, whether I'm bringing it in from another island that does have a coal mine or a coal kind of resource here. So if you're ever looking for kind of raw resources, here is where they are. And the last thing I want to talk about before we start building is the game speed here. Uh, on this tutorial, I will be playing on the slowest speed. You cannot play this game while paused. So if you are overwhelmed and you would like to pause the game, just know that Anno 1800 is meant to be played without pausing. Why that game decision was made, I'm not sure, but that is the truth here. So that's what it is. However, if you want things to happen quickly, you can just increase the game speed. So if you want your ships to travel faster, if you want your resources to collect faster, um, you can just increase the game speed here. Let's go and find a ship to look at so that that makes sense. Uh, here we have a ship that's moving. Um, it's moving this fast. If I increase the game speed, it is going to move faster and faster. If I slow down the game speed, it is going to move slower and slower. Now, if you're playing against difficult AI, um, that is going to create a problem because the AI might get farther ahead if your game speed is faster because you can only tackle one thing at a time. However, um, for the purposes of learning, sometimes you just want to accumulate resources really quickly so you can keep building things. And so that is kind of right here at the top. The first thing you need to know about building on your islands is that everything needs to be connected to the harbor via a road. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna build a little thing here for my first set of houses. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna build that road. We are going to need a marketplace really early on. So we're gonna build the marketplace. Uh, we're gonna need a couple farmer's residences. So I'm gonna build a couple of farmer's residences here. And as you can see, um, we'll speed it up a little bit here. If they're not connected to the harbor via a road, you're gonna get this little symbol up top that this little road symbol, no connection to harbor. All we need to do is connect everything to the harbor here, just like that, and it will remove that symbol. It does not matter how far away the connection is, it just needs to be connected. So this road could go on forever, but every single thing on your um, island here does need to be connected to the harbor via a road. The next thing you should know about your island is that each island has a storage capacity that it starts at 75 tons per item. Um, you can see at the bottom here, if I click on my harbor at the bottom, um, storage capacity, it says at the bottom is 235 total. Um, we have upgraded our trading posts. So if you have all the resources, you can keep upgrading your trading posts like this and that will increase the storage. And at the bottom, it tells you what the total number is. So the total number for this island is 335 tons per item. So each of these individual items, you can hold up to 335 of. Um, there are many ways to increase the storage. You can do the harbor here. You can build depots, which we'll talk about when we get to the harbor area stuff later. Um, but just know that if you are maxing out on your items and you can't figure out why you can't get more than 75, it's because you have hit your max storage capacity for your island and need to increase it. The next thing we should talk about is money and currency. This game revolves around money. You are gonna have an overall balance at the top. That balance is going to be going up or down. Uh, if you look here, it'll tell you whether the balance is going up or down. Right now, we are making 2,534 coins per minute in a positive balance. So if I just let this play for one minute, 
um, I will gain 2,534 coins, and it will tell you where you are making this money. Our farmers are giving us 1,866, our workers 5,751, so on and so forth. We are spending 6,400 in maintenance, we're spending uh, 1,400 in royal taxes, we're spending 700 for our trade ships. If you just want an overview of your finances, that is right here on the balance thing. You can just hover over it and you're good to go there. Right next to that is our total population. And it tells us how many people are on each island. There are 15 on this island. Um, there are 5,868 total. If I go to another island here like Bracton and I hover over it, uh, Bracton has 5,033 total people on this island. So that's where that all information is. The next bit of information you need to know is this screen right up here. At the top is how many resources you have to build with. So these are all of your construction resources. To build things in this game, you're gonna need wood, you're gonna need uh, steel beams, bricks, windows. There's other ones later, um, but all of your construction resources kind of appear here and tell you how many surplus you have to build with. And right underneath that is how many workers you have of each tier to work with. So if I go to build something like a lumberjack hut here it says it needs five farmers to build that i know that i have 371 extra farmers so i could build that so that's where that information is each island has a certain amount of shares so you can kind of win this game or get ahead by purchasing shares of other people's islands that's a way more advanced thing that we'll talk about later but just know if you're suddenly losing a bunch of money and you're not sure why double check to make sure if you go to the shares overview that all of your shares still belong to you if i go over to bracton all of the shares still belong to me. An example of how this might work is if I come over to Benty's Island Blizzbake here and I go and purchase it, you can see Beryl has already purchased two of her shares. Um, so she only owns three fifths of the, the money coming out of her island here. If someone does buy your shares, they are, you are given the option to buy them back here. However, I just wanted to point this out. If you're suddenly losing money, you have no idea what's going on. I just wanted you to know this exists. If you don't know how to use it other than you know that it exists, that's totally fine. Next thing is that each island has multiple, sometimes, sometimes one, sometimes multiple harbor areas. So as you go into workers here, you're going to see there's a lot of harbor options. We have our depots here if we want to increase the storage capacity. Uh, we have defenses here if you want to um, kind of uh, hedge against a war. You can set up some mounted guns to make sure that the enemy doesn't come in and, and steal your islands from you. You're gonna have shipyards here if you wanna build ships. Um, the main thing I wanna show you this though is that this area that's kind of highlighted in white is the area where you can build all of these things. So if you're wondering where do I build my shipyard, where do I build my depots, where do I build my harbor area buildings, that just happens in the white kind of highlighted area here. On an island like Crown Falls, you can see um, that you can just build it over here as well. There's multiple white highlighted areas, but this area in between that's not highlighted white, you can't build any of these things. If you want to build something over here, that is all good. You can just connect it to a warehouse over here. And finally, I did want to talk about island defenses. Ideally, if you have your settings set up properly, you will not be going to war early on in your first Anno game. That will be way too overwhelming and will absolutely derail you. Um, but just know that you can produce defenses. Each of these defenses here has like a range. And if any enemy ships come sailing into this range, these little defenses will just start shooting at them. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail other than you can build these things if you feel like your harbors keep getting attacked. You can also come into the diplomacy menu down here and figure out who it is you're at war with, who you're at peace with, who you have trade rights with, and who you have an alliance with. Uh, if you are at war with somebody, you can do like I've done here, and you can purchase a ceasefire from them in this menu. I've done that, and my ceasefire ends in about an hour and a half. So those are all options for you, but I just wanted to make you aware that these harbor defenses do exist. If you, for some reason, do find your islands being attacked over and over again, you can use your ships, which we'll talk about later, but you can also build these little cannons as well. Now that we've covered islands, we are going to talk about residents really quickly, and by really quickly, I mean this should probably take like two hours. So on your islands, you will have different tiers of residents. Um, the first ones you're going to start out with here are farmers. So you can see we put some farmer houses down. Um, when you come to the residents, though, the residents on your islands are going to have needs and they're going to have happiness. And you need to be paying attention to both of these things. The needs are obviously in the needs menu here. They need a marketplace. A little bit later on, they're going to need fish and they're going to need work clothes. If we come over to Bracton, where we have lots of farmers, you can see that they need a marketplace, they need fish, they need work clothes, and it's all bright green, so we are meeting those needs. Over in Happiness, they are, need schnapps and they need a pub. You can see we are meeting those needs, so they are broadly happy. This one's a little bit far away from a pub, but if I get closer to the pub, they become a little bit happier. 
for the needs, these are things you need to do to increase your population. So when you are near the marketplace, um, the supply effects here are plus five farmers. So you will get more farmers per house if they are near a marketplace. You will get more farmers per house if they have fish. And so you get three extra farmers and you'll get one extra coin um, as well if they have uh, the fish. And then work clothes will give you two extra farmers per house and three additional coins. So just know that you can check here, what do your farmers need and what will that give you when those needs are met? All right, happiness is the same way. These are the things they need to be happy. All right, they need schnapps to be happy. The effect is eight happiness and plus three coins. You will not get any additional farmers, but you will get additional money. You will also get additional happiness. Same with the pub, additional happiness plus 12 additional coins plus one, but no additional farmers. If we go up to our workers here, which is the next tier, um, they have a different set of needs, right? So we won't talk about how complicated this is other than if I go over to the bread, I'm gonna gain, okay, thanks Princess Ching. I'm gonna see here that they are plus three workers if they have enough bread and plus five coins if they have enough bread. Now, as you can see here, we have three tiers of residents kind of on our first island here. We have our farmers, we have our workers, and we have our artisans here, okay? And so to upgrade farmers to workers and workers to artisans, you only need to fulfill all of the needs. You do not need to fulfill all of the happiness. To show this to you, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to this farmer here. You can see they have all their needs checked off and they have max capacity. So 10 is gonna be the max here. They have their marketplace, they have their fish, they have their work clothes. They don't have their pub though. It's not quite done, it's not fully green. These could be fully blank and I could still upgrade my farmer. So if you're trying to upgrade a farmer to a worker and you're not understanding why you can't do that, it's likely because you have not met all of their needs. And so if I come in here and I click my upgrade button and I upgrade this farmer house, you can see that I am able to do that even though they did not have their pub need met. And now I have a worker house. Same with the workers here. I can go to this worker. This worker has all of its needs met, but not all of its happiness. It doesn't have a church anywhere nearby, zero for uh, the church here. However, if I click my upgrade button, I can upgrade this house to an artisan because I have met all of its needs, which are right here. And finally, as you upgrade, there's one more thing you should know that the needs and happiness kind of change over time, right? So if I come down to my farmers, they need fish and work clothes. When I go to my workers, they still need fish. They still need work clothes. And now they need a whole bunch of other things. When I go up to my artisans, they no longer need fish and work clothes. So it's not an ever expanding list that just builds on top of each other. Eventually, the higher tiers you get, you will shed some of the needs from the lower tiers. So just keep that in mind here is that you're not going to need to provide fish to everybody, just the farmers and the workers. Um, whereas these farmers here aren't going to require the bread like the workers do. So just keep, keep in mind that as you upgrade these tiers, they will shed some of their needs and add new ones. Also upgrading costs resources. So if you've met all the needs and you can't upgrade, you can see here, if I wanna upgrade this worker to a artisan, I need six wood, two bricks and two steel. So if you don't have that in your available resources up here, you will not be able to upgrade even if you've met all the needs. Now it's time to talk about production and production chains. How are you gonna go about meeting the needs of your people here? Where the first thing we're gonna need to do is kind of set up our first production chain. So this game works in production chains. You're gonna to need to know them all, you're gonna to need to remember them. And if you can't remember them, I'm gonna show you how to work around that. So each need here has a production chain. The first thing we are gonna need is timber to build a lot of the buildings for our production chain. But since timber itself is a production chain, I can kind of show you how this works here. So if I click on timber, which is what I wanna build, you can see that it's gonna take the lumberjack's hut here and it's gonna turn it into timber. So this is telling you in which direction the chain is going. It's gonna start on the left and move towards the right. This is a very fairly simple production chain. One item is turning into one other item. However, if you go up to artisans even, um, you can see there are more complicated production chains where it's like these two items are going into this one, and then these two items are going into this one, but it's all kind of happening separately. So the chains do get more complicated as you go, but they all follow the same basic rules which we're gonna cover right now. So we know we wanna build timber and we know that it's gonna be a production chain. So let's start on the left. We are gonna need a lumberjack hut. Let's talk about the information it's giving us. Each lumberjack hut is gonna give us wood every 15 seconds. So we're gonna get one ton of wood every 15 seconds, okay? Um, on the island, we have zero. We have zero lumberjack huts. It is gonna cost 10 coins that is per minute. So every lumberjack hut we build is 10 coins per minute that will be added to the maintenance fee there. It says maintenance minus 6,400. 
um, our lumberjack huts on the other islands are contributing 10 each to that cost. It's going to cost five farmers, so we need to make sure we have five additional farmers available. Um, and then our construction cost is going to be 100 coins. So it'll cost us 100 up front to build it and then 10 every minute to maintain it. So before we build our lumberjack hut, just know that it does need to be connected to a warehouse. A warehouse here costs 10 wood and we only have four. So we know that we cannot connect it to a warehouse that we built. So we're gonna have to connect it to the harbor, which is its own warehouse. So we're gonna put our first lumberjack hut right about here. And we know that it needs to be connected to a warehouse like this. If I then click on the lumberjack hut, uh, they're planting the trees they need, so that's all fine. You can see that it's not quite connected to the warehouse. It doesn't quite reach. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to bring it closer until it does connect to the warehouse. And there we go. It's connected to the front of the warehouse now and it will reach. The trees are planted and we are good to go. If we come and click on our lumberjack hut, I'm gonna slow it down. Um, it is gonna show us the production. It's just scaling up because we just started. So that will hit hundred. If it's producing at hundred percent, we know it is giving us that one wood every 15 seconds. You can see that it's gonna take that one wood, it is gonna come and it is going to deliver it to the warehouse. So that's what's happening. It's making the wood, that's sending it on a cart, which is coming along the road and taking it to the warehouse. Now, when it gets to the warehouse, it's gonna to have to deposit everything in the warehouse. Right now, this is the only thing connecting to the warehouse, so it's not gonna have trouble doing that. But each warehouse has so many loading ramps. Those are found right here. If you have too many things coming in at one time, these loading ramps will get overwhelmed and it won't be able to put the wood in very quickly. It'll kind of have to wait there. If you click on your warehouses and you see that they are being overwhelmed, oops, see, it almost it needed to fill that one there. But for a minute, it kind of uh, flirted in the orange there before it kind of settled down, so that's okay. If you have a warehouse that is being overwhelmed, you will need to upgrade the warehouse by meeting the requirements there, which will add more loading ramps, or you can just straight up build a new warehouse. This is a good time to introduce you to the production screen. This is going to be your most important screen that you will look at. If I stay on Crown Falls here, I come up to balance, I click on balance, and then I come over to production. That's not the quickest way to do it. There is a hotkey, but that's kind of the way I like to do it. You will see here that in Crown Falls, uh, we have our lumberjack cut down. We are producing four wood every minute. So on the statistics screen here, everything is done per minute. So one wood every 15 seconds is four wood per minute. This green bar here is how much we are making. And this bar up top, which will be blue, is how much we are using. So right now on our timber production chain, we are making the wood, but we don't have a sawmill. So I'm gonna illustrate a point here. If I put this sawmill near the lumberjack hut, sometimes it'll be quicker and it will just kind of drop the wood off on the way and kind of skip the warehouse part for now. You can do this with a lot of things. If you have your kind of framework knitters near where you're making the wool, sometimes it'll stop on the way and be a little quicker. I don't wanna worry about that right now. I just kinda of wanna worry about how the warehouse functions. So right now we have the wood coming here and going into the warehouse. I'm going to build the sawmill here. So this uh, lumberjack hut here makes one wood every 15 seconds. This sawmill here makes one timber every 15 seconds. So for every lumberjack hut, I need one sawmill. So if I put one sawmill down here, that's connected to the warehouse. Um, it is going to come to the warehouse looking for the wood. It is gonna load it up. Let's speed that up a little bit. It's gonna load up that wood. See, load, 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 load. It's gonna bring that wood back and it's gonna start making its timber. And then once it's made its timber, it's gonna bring the timber back to the warehouse. And from there, you can use that timber. So the point I'm trying to make, ooh, we're gonna take seven this time. The point I'm trying to make is you can have your lumberjack hut be way over here and your sawmill be way over here. As long as they're both connected to warehouses, you should be totally fine. A good example of this on Bracton would be our brick production. We have our clay pit here that is making um, the clay and it's sending it to this warehouse right here. However, our brick producers are way over here. Yeah, you can see they're way over here. So two of my brick producers for that clay pit are over here. This is also a good example of a production chain that's not one-to-one. -one. If I come to my brick production chain here, um, you can see that for every clay pit, they make one clay every 30 seconds, but the bricks are one every minute. So you need two brick factories for every clay pit to keep the production even. As you can see, clay pits, we have three on the island and brick factories, we have six on the island. Back in Crown Falls, we're gonna go back to our production screen here. 
as you can see, now this blue bar is full. Before it was just green with no blue. So now we are making four lumberjack huts and we are using four lumberjack huts, right? So we're making four wood every minute. We are using four wood every minute. If I were to build another sawmill right here and not another lumberjack hut and go back to this screen, it would invert. You could see now that we are making four every minute and we have eight needed every minute. So you always want the green bar to be above the blue bar. That tells you that you are making more than you need. Right now, as you can see, we are making uh, less than what we need. If we go back to Bracton to kind of show this in effect, if I go over here to my production chains, uh, you are gonna see that almost all of them have a bigger green bar than a blue bar, right? There's very few blue bars that are bigger than green bars. What we wanna make sure is that the green bar is bigger than the blue bar. I want to circle back to warehouses really quickly. If you would like to know how far away your warehouse goes, uh, you can just kind of see it by clicking on the thing. Um, this warehouse is the green line here. So if I move the sawmill kind of over here, it's still going to be connected. Oh, not quite. There we go. Now it's connected to the warehouse. So the green line is how far the cart can travel to get to the warehouse. And finally, if you would like to produce something really quickly or you just need a little bit more of something, but you don't want to build a whole another production chain, say you want a little more wood, but you don't want to build another lumberjack hut or another sawmill, um, what you can do is you can come here uh, you can click on the lumberjack hut and you can come to adjust working conditions and you can adjust the working conditions up to 50%. And it will do that for all of the, the buildings on the island. So every single lumberjack hut on the island, right now there's only one, but if I had two, I had three, I had four, it would adjust that for every single one. So if I want to adjust this to plus 50% and change that, right? And then I wanted to adjust the sawmill to plus 50%, you will see that I have now upgraded my production. I have more wood coming in, but I haven't actually built anything else. You might wonder, that sounds a little bit too good to be true. What is the cost? The cost is happiness. So as you can see, the more things I increase, the less happy my people are. You want to keep your people happy. So you cannot do this with everything all the time. I just want you to know that this functionality is available if you need it for any reason. If for whatever reason you need to increase the production of something, whether it's one item or a whole... Be quiet, farmer. Hush, farmer. Anyways, if you want to increase the production but not build anything new for the cost of happiness, you can do that here. Um, so let's increase that. We'll change that there. And then if we come into our production again, you will see that they now say six instead of four because we increased it by 50%. Where that screen comes in handiest when you are learning how to play this game is if you have multiple items that are needed in multiple production chains. So if we have bread here, we need wheat for the, um, we need wheat for uh, the bread production chain. So we're making a bunch of bread, we need wheat for that. Uh, we're making a bunch of beer, we need wheat for that. We have a bunch of silos on our farms over here. Um, so we need a bunch of wheat for that. I can't keep track of how much wheat we need for all of that. So what's good is that I can just come in here. And if I don't remember like how much wheat do we need, this screen tells me how much wheat we need. So we need uh, seven. I'm making 15. I have way more than enough wheat. If I want to build another flour mill, uh, I can just build another flour mill. I can build two of them. And it's fine because I have enough wheat. And I don't need to keep track exactly of the math because this screen just keep tracks of it, keeps track of it for me. So you, when you are dealing with more complicated production chains or you just get later in the game and you are building multiple things for multiple reasons, this screen is just going to tell you if you're making what you need for what you're trying to make. The next thing I want to talk about is ships. During this game, you will have hundreds of ships. Maybe not hundreds, but you'll have a lot of ships. And I want to talk to you about how to make them and how they work. So early on to make ships, you are going to need a shipyard. You can find that at the worker stage here. You're going to come to your small harbor. Uh, you are going to find the sailing shipyard here. I have a modded shipyard, but I'll build the normal one just so you can see what that's like. We're going to put it down there. Wonderful. We now have our selection of ships that we can build. So these ones have sails. Later, they'll have engines and steam and all the rest. But here's your kind of early introduction to ships. If you hover over the ships that you want to build, it has a bunch of information. How much influence is it going to cost? How much time is it going to take to make? The cost of construction, wood, sails, that type of stuff. It's also going to have information at the top, cargo slots, item slots, loading speed. We're going to talk about all of that in a minute. But to build a ship, you're just going to come in. You're going to make sure you meet the requirements. So this one here needs sails and weapons and wood. So when you have all the requirements, you're just going to click the ship and it's going to start making the ship. And it'll kind of, if I speed it up really fast, this yellow bar is going to get bigger as it makes the ship. It is only going to use 
the uh, people it needs while you're building the ship. So when we're done building the ship is gonna return the workers back because when the workers are not building a ship, they go back into the pool. So you're gonna need a surplus of workers or whoever is building these ships to make sure they are getting built. I can click the ship multiple times if I wanna build a queue here. That is all good. It will just keep building these ships. Early on, you are going to need wool to uh, make the sails for these ships. So it's just a one-to-one -one production chain here. However, I just want to show you how this works. If you put a sheep farm down or a pig farm or really any animal farm, um, it's not going to work right away. You're going to have to click the animal farm and you're going to have to put its pastures down. So you're going to put the pastures down anywhere in this green area. Uh, the newspaper's fine. And then once that's done, it's going to start working and that's great. This is also a good time to show off blueprint mode. If you would like to plan out your island without actually committing the resources, just click the V key and that will build in blueprint mode. So I'm gonna put that down there. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna put the uh, modules where I'd like them. Just like that, that's fine. Okay, however, uh, you can see that it's not built yet. So if I wanna build it, I'm gonna click upgrade and then I'm gonna upgrade the, the sheep farm and then the modules and that's perfect. This comes in really handy if we come back over to this island, um, we don't have enough resources yet to build everything, right? And so oh, we're still on massive speed. So if I wanna plan my uh, island here, I can just click on the farmer's residences and I want to, okay, I wanna build these ones here and these ones here. And then I want to kind of build a road around that. And then I wanna use the copy function and I wanna copy that kind of set of houses and I want uh, to put a couple more down. It's nice to be able to build this without having to commit to it. And then as I feel kind of ready to upgrade these houses, I can just click the upgrade button and upgrade two or four at a time. But kind of helps me keep everything in sync here. You can do this with your production chains as well. Um, if I want to start a schnapps production chain, I can build the potato farm here and just kind of plan that out. Yep, that's where I want to build the potato farm. That's perfect. So that's all the modules there. And then this is where I want to build my schnapps factory. That's there. That feels good. And then it's going to need a warehouse. So I'm going to put a warehouse here. That's fine. And once I have everything set up, I'm going to be able to come in. I'm going to be able to upgrade the warehouse, upgrade the potato farm, and then upgrade the schnapps. And that will all start working. So that is the V key and that is blueprint mode. And hopefully that just showed you how to build warehouses and schnapps and potatoes and all the rest of it. If you want to get rid of anything, you can just use the demolish key here and just demolish all the stuff you built. Bye. Uh, that way you can replace it with something else. The move function is also really good. You can come here and relocate. You can just drag all the stuff you want to move around. If you don't want to copy it, but you actually want to move it, you can just do that to your heart's desire. Back to ships. We're going to take a look at a couple of our ships here and kind of talk about what makes them great. Uh, so here we have a pretty standard frigate. There's a few things to note. Um, at the bottom here, it has some of the information about the ship. You can also find this out when you're building it, uh, how much damage it does, the attack speed if you want to do combat, which I recommend trying to avoid if you're learning, how many hit points it has, how much maintenance it's costing you. This one is costing me 100 coins uh, every minute. It has some cargo slots here, so I can bring it to my harbor. If I want to fill this with cargo, we can, my hands we can bring it to the harbor. And then I can just transfer a bunch of stuff into the cargo hold there. Um, so there's three spots for cargo. So it can take three different items up to a certain amount. In this game, it's 75. I think that might be modded. There might be 50 for you. But for whatever the max amount is, you can kind of load it up there. It also has a spot for items. We're going to talk about items later. But any ship-based items can kind of go in here and they will provide their effects to the ship. To find all your ships, just click the ship menu. It will show you all the ships in this region. So if I want all the ships that are here, they're here. If I go to my Crown Falls Island, uh, it's gonna show me uh, the That's ships that are here. Um, so any ship that you have uh, in the region, just find the ship menu and that's fine. If you want an overview there, if you wanna see the idle ships, the trading ships, the patrol ships, whatever you wanna do with them, that's all here. The next thing you can do with ships is trade and you will have dozens and dozens and dozens of trade routes by the time you have finished your game of Anno. I could take 900 tutorials to kind of go through all of the trading information. I'm just gonna do my best to do it right now. The first thing I wanna do is identify a trade route I wanna make. So let's say I wanna trade um, something from Bracton to my island in Crown Falls. I'm gonna click the ship I wanna make the trade. There's a bunch of ways to do this. I'm gonna start with the ship. You can start with the trade route menu down here if you wanna do that and just click create route. I'm gonna start with the ship. I wanna take this frigate right here and I wanna use it to trade. 
Um, just so you know, there are better trading ships like these clippers. They are uh, faster sailing. They have more cargo slots, um, but they don't have any weapons for defense. And so um, there's a lot of different ships you can use and they'll be different. Uh, they'll have different qualities to them. Um, ideally, you want to use like clippers maybe because they're trading ships. But for the purpose of this, we will use this frigate. I'm going to click the frigate. I'm going to click open the trade route menu. And here I can set up my trade route. So we are here in the old world. The ship we've selected is on this trade route, which is great. Uh, we are going to start at Bracton. And at Bracton, I want to pick up bricks. Let's say I do not want to make bricks at Crown Falls. I'm going to pick up bricks. Every time you come here, I want you to pick up, let's say, 15 bricks. So you're going to pick up 15 bricks here in Bracton. And I want you to pick up five steel in Bracton. Every time you come here, I want you to do that. Okay. Then I want you to head to Cape Trelawney and I want you to head to Crown Falls. All right. And I want you to unload those goods. Okay. So you can see what's happening here. I'm loading the goods at Bracton. I'm unloading them at Crown Falls. Okay. To make the trade route quicker, when you get to Crown Falls, if it is full, the harbor is full at Crown Falls, and uh, I just want you to keep going on the trade route. I would like you to discard the cargo. So if there are, it's already full, you get there, there's no more room for bricks or steel, you're just gonna chuck it in the ocean and keep on going. Alternatively, at Bracton, um, you can have it wait uh, for goods, right? So if I want this to wait, always wait until there are 15 bricks and five steel. Um, do not leave without this amount. You can click this. If you don't click this and it comes and there's less, it will just take less. But these are some of the options here. You can have it wait for the goods. You can have it discard the cargo. Uh, you can have it wait to unload. There's a bunch of different things going on here that you can kind of play around with. Let's say I wanted to really make this tricky. I want you to come to Bracton. I want you to load up 20 bricks and I want you to load up 20 steel. And then I want you to deposit 10 of each at Crown Falls. Then I want you to come all the way to the New World, to Manola, and I want you to deposit 10 of each there. That's also an option. So you can send your trade routes to multiple islands if you'd like. When you are ready to go, you are just going to click accept. This is a pretty complicated trade route early on. We're picking up 20 in one city. We're dropping off 10 at each of the others. Uh, let's say there's something in, uh, in Manola that I wanted to bring back. Okay, so we get to Manola. That's our last stop on our trip. And I want to load up. What do I want to load up in Manola? What are we making there? We're making fried plantains in Manola. So I want you to load up uh, 10 for 11 fried plantains. And I want you to unload those plantains up in Bracton. Does that make sense to everybody? Does everyone understand how that's working when we're loading and unloading and how this trade route screen works? Uh, once that's done, we're going to name the route. We're going to go construction materials to islands. That's what I'm going to call that. I'm going to assign it a group, which is great. I'll click accept. What's the problem? No, nope, it's all good. Everything's fine. And so I'm going to come here. I'm going to create a new group. No, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. I'm going to rename the group that we created. And that's just going to say this one's starting here. These are for routes that start in the old world and go to Cape Trelawney and go to the new world. So it kind of just tells you in which order the trade routes are going so that I know what is going on with my trade routes. If you want to see how quickly your trade routes are functioning so you can choose uh, how much to put on each trade route, you can do that in your island screen. So if we come up to our island here, um, and I click just, I guess the balance is fine. When I go over to storage, it has your trade routes here. So I have this trade route here. It is uh, taking soap to Eli and bringing back iron and coal. You can see that this trade route is executing every three to four minutes. Now, how often your trade routes execute bases is based on a couple of things. How, uh, how fast are your boats? How fast can your boats travel? Do they have to wait to load or unload? If there's no room at your harbor, and the boat has to wait, that route will take longer. This is really important for figuring out the math of your trade routes. For instance, that's what we've done here. So if I come to my island and I click storage here, you can see that I'm taking five soap every time I'm on this trade route. Now you might wonder, uh, how have I come to the number five, right? Well, this is a very short trade route. It's executing every three to four minutes, right? So it's coming from here, going to there. It is picking up soap, and selling that and then buying coal 
and iron. You can see that I have it at 100. It was buying about 12 because this trade route is too quick for that, but that's fine. I just have it to buy as much as it can, which is always going to be less than 100, but that's fine. How did we decide on five soap? Well, we know it takes three to four minutes to execute this trade route. And if I come to my production here, um, our extra soap is two extra soap per minute. So if it takes three minutes to do the trade route, and there's two extra soap per minute, right? That's six soap every time that's available. And then I just wanna make sure we have a little bit extra on either end. And so that's how we came to the number five. Every single time we will always be able to do five. If we do six, seven, eight, or nine, um, we might run out of soap on the main island depending on the wind speed, uh, whether the boats are waiting, that kind of thing. If you want to make sure you always have a surplus of items available on your island, um, let's say I mess up the soap trade route and I'm going to run out of soap, I can come to this island, I can click soap, and I can set a minimum stock. So I've set it at 10, but let's say I set my minimum stock to 25. Uh, the trade route will not take any soap if the number is below 25. That way you can make sure your residents always have some if you've messed up the trade route in some way. You'll have time to come back and fix it before they run out of soap. The next thing I want to talk about quickly is influence. In the top uh, left here, you have your influence screen, which we have not looked at yet. Influence is a currency. Right now we have four of it. We had 385 influence. You can see how you're getting it. You gain this by increasing your population. You can see my population is 5,592 out of 6,000. When we get to 6,000, we will gain another 20 influence. You will need influence for a variety of things. If I come and try and settle this island here, so we have everything we need to settle the island. We have the wood, we have the steel, we have the money. That's all in this ship here. That's how you settle another island. But when we go to click settle island, it's not giving us the option because I can't build the trading post. I don't have eight influence. I only have four. So I need eight influence to settle a new island. So every time you settle a new island, it will cost influence when you build harbor defenses. It will cost influence. Uh, if you build boats, it'll cost influence. You can see what you're spending your influence on up here so we've spent 379 of it buying new islands we spent a little bit of it on trade um, once you start spending your influence on these types of things you can see what the effects are here for expansion um, we already have world leader which is giving us 200 extra island workforce uh, that's how i have the farmers workers artisans and engineers on this island without actually having built anything yet um, but if you are spending your influence in other places culture for the zoos and the museums um, trade unions, uh, trade routes, those types of things, whatever it is you're spending your influence on, I guess trade is building ships, propaganda is changing the newspaper, uh, you will gain bonuses based on your influence spend. Next, I briefly want to cover expeditions. Um, so expeditions are how you are going to unlock new playable areas. Uh, right now we have the Land of Lions DLC enabled that is found via expedition. So this expedition up top here is going to give us a new area. These expeditions here are going to give us items. And so if we want to get to the Land of Lions, it is a one-star difficulty expedition. Um, from there, it'll give me all the information I need. The reward, a brand new region. So let's say I want to send this boat on the expedition. So we have freedom. It's a frigate. I want to send it on the expedition. You want to make sure it either has the items you want kind of preset in there, or it's near a harbor that has those items because it will take from the harbor that is near. So freedom, the frigate is the one we want to send. We're going to come to this expedition. We're going to assign a ship. It'll be freedom, the frigate here. At the top are the things you are going to need for your expedition. So the harder the expedition, the more of these things you're going to need. Uh, the easier expedition, uh, the less you're going to need, or you won't really need them at all. And ideally, you want to prepare your ship to get to 100% so that it's ready to go. The first thing we need is rations. So I'm going to come over here to my goods and my items, and I'm going to click rations and see what's available. We have lots of schnapps. Um, so I'm just going to take schnapps. This also gives us a boost in medicine. Now you can see that we don't need medicine, but it's still pretty handy dandy. I'm just going to put a bunch of schnapps in there. Now our ship prep is at 77. All right. The ship's doing the navigating. Uh, the rations are covered by the schnapps. Next, diplomacy. What do we have for diplomacy? Beer is diplo diplomacy. We'll put in like 50 or 60 beer. Now we're already at 100 without the faith, right? So we can send it before we're at 100, but we want to make sure we're at 100. Then faith, what do you got for faith? It's bread, but I don't have any bread that will give us faith. That is all good. Okay, I can send this naval architect that has crafting and navigation. So that's fine there. We could do that if we wanted to. I could send this baker that has 10 crafting. I could do that. If I have any ship-based items, they will go in the item slots here. 
Um, but that's oh, fine. When I'm ready to go, I'm going to send my expedition. And it's going to do its thing. And when it's done, uh, we're going to be at the Land Alliance. All right, so if you thought your expeditions were one click and you're done, you'd be wrong. Every once in a while, your admiral is going to come and yell at you. You can either click the button here when it comes up, or if you miss it, you can just come into your expeditions and you'll come in here. It's going to give you a blurb about what's happening. I guess for this uh, for this uh, expedition here, we can choose whether we want to go to Elispo or go to Al Souk. I guess we'll go to Al Souk. That's fine. Uh, we've been palm flanked or whatever. You can read this. It's going to tell you a bit of a story. It tells you what your options are, what your success chance is going to be. Um, and then you can just click through it, click the ones you like. And then it's going to have some games for you to play. I'm going to refuse it, whatever. Play the games, whatever you're going to do. Uh, click the... Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, we're just going to click through this. That's fine. Oh no! I've lost 24 of my schnapps and my beer. That's okay. We're going to keep soldiering on. We're going to continue our journey. And we're going to go to the Crocodile Delta. So just know that your expeditions are not done until you come to this screen a bunch of times and actually completed them. And if you're wondering why your expedition's not complete, it's because you haven't come here and done all the cool little bits and bobs. It'll have a big exclamation point if you need to take a look at it. Once you've gained new regions, though, they are pretty cool. This is the region we started in here. This is our main island. Uh, we have discovered the New World, which is after you get to workers or artisans, sorry. After you get to artisans, you can come and discover the New World. So we have a bunch of islands here. Uh, they have different populations with different needs and different things we can build. And you'll see that we'll need to trade things between... Um, you can see here on your trade routes, we've been trading things to Eli up in the yeah in the old world here we are trading things to eli back and forth but you can trade things to your own islands if you need wheat on this island right but you don't have wheat fertility so you got to build it on this island you can just trade back and forth between your own islands uh, you can also trade between different sessions which we've already talked about and so here um, in the new world is where you make rum we make rum in the new world you cannot make rum in the old world so in the old world here when these folks need rum stuff. happiness uh, if we click on rum here we are going to need to build it in the new world and ship it up to the old world. If I try and get sneaky and try to build rum here in Bracton, it is going to say constructible only in the new world. So I have to build some ships and get some trade routes to bring the rum up to the old world. I have these assigned to hotkeys, which I recommend you do is just come in and make sure that you can quickly uh, pal between them just with like the, I have QWE on my keyboard. Uh, if you want to press the space button, though, that'll take you into the world view. Um, when your ships are traveling, they will kind of travel through this middle area here. So this is part of the travel time of the ships between regions. Um, better ships later on in the game with better items will be able to travel faster between the regions. So that's fine. Um, but the new world is right here. The old world is right here. Cape Trelawney is right here. So if I want to visit one, I just click the one I want to visit. Again, you can see how much longer this takes. I recommend just finding hotkeys. But you can do it this way if you sure would like to do it this way. And the last thing I want to talk about is trading with NPCs or uh, using items or both. So right now we're going to take the ship Lalibella, our flagship. I am going to uh, I'm going to start a trade here at Eli. So we're going to come over here to Eli and we're going to start a trade. Actually, first I'm just going to do this whole thing. We're going to speed this up to three. I'm going to do this whole thing in real time. I'm going to come to my harbor with my ship. I'm going to load up on soap. I know Eli loves soap. I've got a bunch of soap, so we are going to do that. And then we are going to sail the ship to Eli. So you can see the ship speed is affected by the wind, how far we have to go, that type of thing. If this were on a trade route too, it's also affected by how long it takes to load and unload. Um, different harbor items, different ship items can increase or decrease that loading speed, which is fine. While the ship is moving, if you do at any point need to uh, build more piers, your ships are having trouble loading, you just come into your harbor building, uh, you can construct a new pier here. Provides additional space for ships to load and unload goods. When you have all the requirements, plot that down. And then you have more piers, and now your ships can trade at two different places to help speed things along. So I just wanted to show you that, in case you're wondering. Uh, we're going to jump back to our ship with the soap. And it's just cruising straight over to Eli. Vroom, vroom. We'll get there. This is as fast as I can go. Oop, our expedition is requiring our attention again. We've already showed you how that works, though, so I'm not going to show that again. Um, we're going to trade goods here. We're going to slow it down again. I know that Eli likes to buy soap for 384, so we're just going to take our extra soap here. Bajinga, 38,400 gold. 
Um, and then here he sells uh, coal and iron and all this type of stuff. Items are things he also sells. So here's how the items work. The items go into different places. We'll talk about those places later. Um, but you can see here, this is equipped in a town hall. This is equipped in a town hall. These are probably all, no, this is equipped in a trade union. Uh, this is equipped in a trade union. So it's say equipped in blank and you got to put it in that thing. It'll tell you the effects. It affects weapon factories. Uh, this one affects all pubs. And then it tells you what it does. It decreases the productivity um, by minus 50%. The workforce need is plus 150%. The maintenance class is plus 100%, but there's a new input instead of steel. The building processes bauxite and gives you extra aluminum. So you can take a look at all that stuff and see if it's worth it. If you wanna roll through the different items that are available, you click this button, it costs 5,000 coins. It costs a little bit more each time. So you can kind of roll through. Here we have a much better item equipped in town hall. Um, happiness plus seven. Um, so we can buy that. Let's buy that here and I'll show you how this works. So while the boat is coming over here, I can show you the buildings that we're going to need to put these in. There's a bunch of different ones here. They cost influence. If I come here, um, where is my harbor master's office? Where can I build a harbor master's office? Uh, that is right here, a harbor master's office. All of these buildings have a radius, okay? And the radiuses can't overlap. So if I want to build a harbor master office here, I can't do it because our Docklands is in the way. Let's just destroy that for now. If I want to build the Harbor Master's office, I'll do that right here, let's say. That's fine. I need wood and bricks. That's fine. Since it's my first one, it costs zero influence. And the area it influences is in pink. And any buildings it influences will be blue. If I move it here, you can see that they're not blue anymore. You can see that the two Harbor buildings here are blue. And because it's a Harbor Master office, it's not affecting the farmer's houses. We'll build it right there. That's fine. Um, I have a Harbor Master item. So to put the item in, I just go here. I have this Naval Architect. Um, all construction cost is minus 10% and the maintenance cost is minus 50%. So if I click this here and put it in, um, the construction cost and maintenance cost will go down. Here we have our critically acclaimed Tragedition. It affects all Old World residences. That's great, we are in the Old World. Um, we have a happiness boost and a variety theater boost. So if I come here and I go and I want to build that town hall, uh, where is the town hall? There it is. Um, all the houses it affects will be highlighted in blue, as we mentioned. So let's say I want to let's move this worker house out of the way. I want to put the town hall right here. This worker house is also moving out of the way. Uh, this is good for you to see me do this in real time. I'm going to build that. Uh, it's going to cost zero influence because it's my first one. They will cost influence later as you build more of them. Uh, I'm going to come here. These are the items that are available. This will give me plus seven happiness to all the residences. So if I come in here and I see the happiness, does it tell me the total happiness? It says residence happiness minus four. If I come in here and I put that down, boom, all those houses are affected. Residence happiness is now plus 13 for a whole bunch of different reasons. So that's great. That's doing better than I thought it would do anyways, but that's how the thing works. Trade unions affect production buildings. And so your trade unions will have items that go in a trade union. The buildings that it affects are highlighted in blue. You put those down. They cost influence the more of them you build. You have items. This one affects bakeries. So if I want, if I want to go here, uh, the bakery uh, inputs grain instead of flour. So I can literally just cut the flour out of the process because it'll just take grain straight into being bread which is super fun. That's how items work. And that is gonna be the end of this tutorial. The two things I didn't really cover in this episode that I really wanted to were quests and diplomacy, but they're just gonna to have to go into another video because this video is already almost an hour and 10 minutes long. If you are new to Anno, I hope that video was super helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, like button, subscribe button is all there. We are playing this save of Anno 1800 over on VB Plays, our Let's Play channel. Check that out in the description below. Let me know in the description below as well or the comments below if you have any feedback for any new Anno tutorials. I'd love to make more of these. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next one.